Okay, so church, we are speaking this morning, uh, we're continuing our uh, teachings on the doctrine of Christ. Big word, doctrine. But it actually just means everything there is to know about Jesus, the Savior, okay, and how he did things and how he wants us to do things. So Beth spoke to us last week. She spoke to us about uh, repentance of dead works. And it's really... Um, the doctrines lay the foundation for us. Okay, so if we say we believe in Jesus Christ, this is what we teach. And it's actually very important, important because the word of the Lord says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 16. 1 Timothy 4 verse 16, I think it's going to come onto the board soon. But it says, um, take heed, 1 Timothy 4 verse 16, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. It says, continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Isn't that beautiful? It, it, it connects to the final commandment of Jesus when he said, now go and make disciples of everybody. And when you make disciples of, of somebody, you need to teach them the right stuff. You need to, to teach them something that is powerful, that's going to enable them, that's going to save them, and that's going to be accurate. And you will save both yourself and the other person. And the doctrine of Christ really, um, if we embrace that and we strictly adhere to, that, to those teachings, it will empower us to grow strong and powerful in the faith. That is where we need to be. You know, um, the Word of God has everything we need. There's not a, a theme in history that the Word of God doesn't touch. Everything in life, all the different aspects of life, the Word of God touches and it, 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 it gives wisdom about it, okay? We are the ones that are sometimes lazy or we think we want to do our own thing and then we do it and eventually through a lot of hardship, we, we get to the right way, okay? So, so, so in, instead of experimenting with most of life, there is a guide, it's called the Bible, okay? There is a guide, and if you read that from the beginning, you will probably get there quicker, okay? <laughs> you will go through life quicker. And yes, you will still have hardships, but I'm going to explain to you today, we're going to speak about faith, the gift of faith. And the start, starting point is faith, but it's actually a journey. It's a faith walk that we have with God. You know, life is sometimes like uh, mathematics, okay? Some of you have already forgive, forgotten all the mathematics that you, that you were taught at school. But, um, you know, it's really about this, this problem sometimes, okay? And you have to find an answer, okay? So th the Word of God gives you a formula to get there quicker. So if you know the formula of how to go through a mathematics uh, sum, you will get to the answer quicker and more accurately. Uh, there's an Afrikaans joke that says, Hoekom is wiskunde so moeilik? Sommer. <laughs> Sommer. So, you know, sometimes it's just difficult. You can't explain it and it's, it's just difficult. But there is, there is a way. And just like, um, like, like maths, there's a formula, there's a doctrine. And we are going to, to continue this teaching on the doctrine. So Beth spoke about... Um, one of them, which is repentance of dead work. Dead work. So there's seven that we're going to cover in total. The second one is faith in God, and that is what we're going to do today. Then there is the doctrine of baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment, and the Lord's Supper. So all of these are the doctrines which the Lord wants us to know. You know, these are the secrets of the heavenly kingdom that he wants to share with us today. Um, if we can get on the board, Hebrews 10, verse 38 and 39. That is really the starting point. You know, Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter, but Hebrews, Hebrews 10, verse 38 and 39 is sort of the intro to that. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. So it says, but the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by 
his conviction respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. And holy fervor born of faith and conjoined with it. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. But, but our way is not that of those who draw back to eternal misery or perdition and are utterly destroyed. But we are of those who believe, who cleave to and trust in and rely on God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and by faith preserve the soul. Amen. That is actually out of the Amplified Classic. Um, that specific uh, translation. Now that fervor there is the intense and passionate feeling. That is what it is. So, so through faith, you can get that intense and passionate feeling of living. Okay, and that is what the Lord wants for us. He wants us to have that 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 feeling. Um, Hebrews eleven verse six says then how we can please God. And it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you want to live a life that pleases God, you need to live a life of faith. And we're going to look today into what is faith. So if that is the way to please God, so if the only way God will be happy with you is to have faith, how do we, what is faith? How do we get it? How do we use it? How do we apply it? Um, and we'll speak more about that word live. Okay, what, what living entails. Like I said in the beginning, living is the completeness of life. Everything you need in your marriage, in your work, in your school, in your business, it entails the whole living, you know, like the earth ball, it's a round thing and it contains everything. Living contains everything. So Hebrews 11 verse 1 says the following. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I also want to just read that out of the, the Amplified Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. How beautiful is that? So faith is a choice to trust. It is a choice. It doesn't come by itself. It is a choice that you make to say that what I hope for will eventually come true. It will eventually realize. It is an absolute conviction in your heart and in your soul of taking hold of things that you cannot see. And I want to say this morning that it is an opportunity that needs to stir you inside. Because once you see it, you can't believe it anymore because then the opportunity is gone. You know, the opportunity, but, but I can see it now, it's, it's there. But the wonderful thing about faith is that you can be excited about something. You have the opportunity to be excited and stirred about something that's going to happen. And you can have already that passionate feeling of having it. Okay? So it, it, it keeps you excited and driven that you're going to get that. And then you have a joyful life because if you turn that around and you wait for something to happen, then you will be happy. You might never be happy. You might, you might miss it totally. So the Greek word for, for faith is pistis. And that means to have a firm conviction based on what you hear. How amazing is that? Not what you see, okay? It's a firm conviction based on what you hear. So, what we believe has everything to do with what we hear then. You need to hear the right things. If we hear things that are bad, what we believe is bad. If we hear things that are good, what we believe is that is going to be good. So, 
you must watch out what you fill your ears with. Okay? I mean, it's, it's simple. If you hear the news that, you know, you wanted to go boating and it's going to be a cold weekend, you know, then your whole weekend is, is spoiled because of what you heard. Okay? But you must, you, must, you must fill your ears with the Word of God. So faith, secondly, if we go back to the verse, verse, verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance. So faith is the guarantee. It's the confirmation or the title deed of things that we are hoping for. So it proves the existence of some things that we do not see, but we know it's there. If, if, if you say to me, I have a house, I'm going to ask you, where's the title deed? Okay? And even that you can turn around because if, if you show me, look at my house, and I'm going to not believe you because I first want to see the title deed. Okay, so the title deed is more important. And the title deed in this case uh, is the proof that you will have something. And that is faith. So if your faith is, is, is strong enough, you will see in your spiritual eye what you, were, what you already have. You already have that. You, only, you, you see the title deed. But you have it because it's coming. So faith is that firm persuasion. It's that absolute trust and the unquestionable belief in God's word in the things that you do not see. But you believe in God's word. That is the title deed. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the first expression there is faith is. Okay, Faith is. Not faith is going to be or faith will be, but faith is. It's in the present. So it is, it is, it is every time it's a now decision. And it's a conviction that it will be done today, not tomorrow. Um, so many people say, you know, water it down. Maybe not now. You know, you, 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 you actually speak it over your own situation. God's God is, 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 gives us faith for now, okay? It is possible today. It is possible now. Um, we also see that in the Word of God where Martha believed that the brother would, would be raised tomorrow. Uh, when Lazarus died and Jesus was standing in front of her and he, and he said to her in John 11 verse 23 and 24, he, he said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, yes, yes, Lord, I know. He will rise again, rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she was not thinking about a miracle and the power of her faith of now. She was just saying, well, one day, one day, he will rise again. And then, of course, Jesus raised him. And that word was meant for now. So, so beautiful that he then blesses her with her wish that day. Um, and that needs to be for us a faith stirrer. We need to speak our word into existence. Hebrews 11 verse 1 uh, again says the substance, okay, the substance of things that, 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 that's, that we hope for. Now substance means you can touch it, okay? It's, it, it, it has depth, okay? It's three-dimensional substance. You can touch it. Of, and it is, it is not an illusion or an idea, but something that is real and concrete. So faith, faith is the substance. It re refers to things being real and concrete. So God, God's word gives substance to, what, to that which we believe to receive. So hope does not have substance. If I, if I say... To you, I hope that it's going to go better with my finances. That is not faith. Because it's not the substance. Faith is to give substance to what you hope for. So, hope without faith is void. Okay? And empty. It's just a hope like the world hopes. I hope it will get better. I hope South Africa will change. I hope my business will change. But when you add faith to it, it means that there is a concrete substance Forming, and we're going to, <clears throat> to learn today how to use that. So we need to teach one another, right? So if somebody say, 
if you, if you say to some, or somebody say to you, I hope my business is going to go better, you must tell them, no, 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 we're not going to hope for that. We're going to believe that. We're going to have faith that that is going to, to, to be the case. So, <clears throat> so when we hear the expressions, uh, the substance of or the conviction of what we do not see, it refers to things being real, even though our physical eyes cannot see that. The substance of things hoped for means that we are dealing with things that are unseen. But faith is not based on things on, uh, that our five uh, senses can, can, can see or hear or feel, but on the invisible and internal truths and realities that are revealed in the Word of God. So <clears throat> having this, the, 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 the evidence that something exists, but not seeing with our, uh, our natural eyes, and that does not decide to deny the existence of it or the fact that it is real. If I can illustrate that uh, with, um, you know, if you, if you have car insurance, normally you have that sticker on your car that says insurance with your insurance number. You don't have the whole insurance document with you when you drive. You only have that sticker. So that's, that sticker is the proof that you have uh, car insurance. So that is the evidence that proves the existence of something else. So faith proves the existence of what we do not see. So in the natural, if we do something, um, or, or if we do not see something, it simply does not exist in the natural. But, and that is why skeptics will say to you, I will see it, or I will, I'll believe it when I see it, okay? That is what the skeptics will say. But the word of God is, is the other way around. I first see it in my spiritual eye, and then it will exist. And the word of God tells us that the righteous will live by faith. So, some things exist in the world today, and it happens around us, but we do not see it, okay? For instance, say, you are in a big building and you're in a small office inside and you cannot see outside. And it is raining outside, but you don't know it, okay? And you can't see it. Until somebody comes into that building with, with wet clothes and wet shoes and wet hair, then you say, oh, but it is raining outside, okay? So the, 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 the thing with faith is that we believe in the promises of God. So the evidence... Uh, that proves th this statement that God is working is the promises of God that are foolproof. We see that in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 that says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Okay, so although we don't see things that we believe in yet, because we are still in the hoping phase, through faith, God is working. So outside it's raining. Amen? God is working even though we don't see it. And that is how faith connects us with reality. So if the Lord says the righteous shall live by faith, if we have faith, I know that God is working. I know it, that God is creating. God is, is forming substance of what I believe. Amen? So, why did God choose faith as the means to please him? Because it's the only way that makes our faith real is because we are believing in a God that we cannot see. And that makes us totally dependent on him. So we are totally dependent on God because we cannot see him, but we believe he's there. The same, we cannot see the things we hope for yet, but through faith, we can see it. Amen? So we are dependent on this God that creates something out of nothing. And you cannot live without faith. Romans 14 verse 23 says, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. So whatever you don't do from a point of faith is missing the mark. 
It's missing that independence on God. We are dependent on him and dependent on his provision. Um, Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says the following, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright inside of him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Okay, so I want to ask somebody that's excited, excited about this thing called faith. This treasure called faith. Who's exciting about it? This treasure called faith. Thank you, Keith. You can come and come help me just to put up this board. And this board is going to reveal to you what makes Keith so exciting about faith. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Bless you. This is so beautiful. The word live <clears throat> the word live in Greek is the word chaya. So, we are speaking about the faith walk. God gives us grace to live. And the word there is chaya in, in Greek. It's chaya. Can you see the remembrance there? The ya part uh, about the God the creator, Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh. Um, <clears throat> Yahweh means he who makes that which have, uh, have been made. He who makes that which have been made. So God the creator. Out of nothing makes something. Okay? Yahweh. But the word live, so God gives us grace to live, is chaya. Now, <clears throat> look at the meaning of that word. To exist to exist, to preserve, to flourish, to enjoy life, to live happy, to breathe, to be of good cheer, to recover, to be in perfect health. Amen? Who wants that? Amen. Yes, thank you. thank you. He gives us grace to live, okay, to experience that. This is what he, what he says. He's, he's reaching out and he's giving that to you. But man is on the other hand. We have to choose to have faith to be saved. It is a decision. Now, that saved <clears throat> in Greek is zozo, okay? So some people spoke, speak about the zozo life, okay? That's the good life, the zozo life. <laughs> So, to be saved, in other words, God is reaching out. He wants to give you life. You have to say, God, yes, I take that. I have faith so that I can be saved. It means salvation, healing, provision, deliverance, regeneration. How good is that word? Regeneration, preservation, prosperity. Amen? Amen? Who wants that? Amen. Yes. So there is a way that God gave us to get hold of that, to take hold of that, to take that treasure out of the ground and to actually make it useful. And that is through faith. Uh, that, that part about grace we find in Ephesians 2 verse 8. Ephesians 2 verse 8 that says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that, not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Okay, so it's a gift. But how do you receive that gift? Through faith. Okay, you have to say, Lord, I believe. I believe. I don't hope for something. I believe it. So, the believer's salvation, you'll say, I put it in there, it's, it's intermediate, progressive, and final. Because... It happens immediately, you are saved, you're going to heaven, okay? But now there is a progressiveness where you take that faith seed, the mustard seed, that's right in the center of, of our faith. Now, a mustard seed is extremely small. I have some of them here, a whole pot full of them. <laughs> you, you can't see it. 
Okay, it, it, is, it, is, it is so small. But you take that master seed and you plant it in good soil. So you take your seed of faith that God has given to you. You plant it in good soil. You water it, you look after it, and it starts growing. And it becomes a massive 10 or 12 foot uh, shrub or a tree in your garden. So it is immediate you are saved, but it is progressive and it will be final because finally you'll be with God in his kingdom when Jesus returns. Now the question that you might ask is, but do all believers have faith? Do all believers have faith? We find the answer in Romans 12, verse 3. Romans 12, verse 3 says, For I say, through the grace given to me, the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So the answer is yes. If you're in this church and you believe in Jesus, you have received your faith. You have received that master seed, mustard seed. But that's only the seed. Now you have to do something with that seed to see the fruit of it, to see it grow in the end. So a lot of people say, but uh, please pray for me for faith. Pray, pray for me for more for faith. And then you can get it. It doesn't work like that. You can't get more faith. Faith is something that you have to exercise. You have to nurture it. Because if you say, I need more faith, it's just because you haven't nurtured your seed. You haven't exercised your faith. We know the word says that faith is, faith is like exercising a muscle, okay? You have to exercise it so that it becomes stronger and stronger so that it can help you and pull you out of, of the hole you're in. So faith needs to be nurtured. And the question that you should really then ask is, but if I, don't, if I feel I don't have enough faith, how do I then get to have more faith? How do I mature this, 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 this seed of faith? How do I make sure it grows? Okay? How do I get to a point where I see all of this manifest in my life? Preserve, flourish, enjoy life, live happy, breathe, be of good cheer. I want that. But what's going to get me there? Is my, is my situation going to pull me down into a hole or is my faith going to lift me out of that hole? Okay? Am I going to be saved because I have faith? Salvation, healing, provision, regeneration. Matthew 17 verse 20 um, describes where, where Jesus or Jesus' disciples prayed for something uh, and they couldn't, couldn't get the boy healed. And Jesus said to him, it's because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. It's not impossible for you to have all of those, to have it right now, today. But you must grow that, that, that faith seed. You must grow it. You must plant it. You must nurture it. You must grow your faith. Your faith, you must look up to your faith. You, you must ask yourself on a daily basis, what do I do with my faith today? How, must, how do I make sure my faith grows today? Now, how can we apply this then spiritually um, in our lives? So, Every believer have received this measure of faith like a mustard seed. We're going to put it in good ground. We're going to grow it. Even sometimes we feel that God is, is only in certain things. So we will ask him and pray for him for healing, but we won't pray for him for financial uh, uh, um, breakthroughs. And the reason for that is just that you haven't 
nurtured your seed and grow your faith in the other areas. Because like we see there, God is a God of completeness and wholeness. Your whole life can be different if you believe. So, I mean, I had a massive uh, testing this past couple of weeks with, with business. And, um, you know, up to a point where I said to God, but God, maybe, maybe, maybe you, are, you are not concerned about business. Maybe you are more concerned about souls and, 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 and healing and just being saved and just, be, just survive. And I, because what I see for my business does not, does not yet happen. And um, I had to go back and repent and say, Lord, I repent. I repent. Lord, I know you know better. Because I don't know. Yes, currently business is going down. And yes, we're going to retrain some people. But on the other side of that, there's more. Remember, we, we, we spoke about that. Um, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plans I have for you. Plans that are good. So if, if, if we don't see the good yet, we must just persevere. Go through the valley of death. And on the other side, his word says to give you hope in the end. Okay? So it just means that God is busy with something. So I'll flow with it and I'll go with that. Lord, because you know better. And at the end, you will pick me up again. But I had to declare it with my mouth. Because I came to a point where I really say, but Lord, how can you let this happen? And the point then is just to believe that God is busy in a process. Maybe he knows something that I don't know that will happen with that particular part of the business, okay? That he will pick up at the, at, at the end and give me something else. And I declare that this morning in Jesus' name with gladness and with happiness that that is what he will do. And I do that in faith. And just by saying that, you already feel the burden lifting feel the burden lifting off you and you don't sit in that jail of bitterness and of questions and of Lord why this and Lord why did you let this happen but you just sit with that seed of faith and hope that lifts you up that says Lord I know you're going to grow this faith you're going to take me to a better place we increase our faith by hearing the word of God Remember the word that we said in the beginning, pistis? A firm foundation of what you hear, okay? What you hear. So it's all about what you hear. So it's, um, <clears throat> the word also, also is actually uh, hearing, which means it's a continuous process. What are you hearing? Not what you heard once, but hearing on a daily basis. And that is why you must fill yourself with the word of God. So... If you sit in a situation where you feel, but God, I can't see you working yes. <clears throat> For instance, say you, have a, you, you, you believe that God can heal people, but you sit with a problem of fear. Okay? You are scared. Then what you do, you go and take the word of God, you take every passage of fear that you can find, and you read it. You read it out loud. You listen to things about fear so that it can build your faith. Then you take that seed of fear or faith and it grows in the particular area of fear until fear disappears because your seed of faith grows. It is nurtured. How wonderful is that, that by what you're hearing can shift your situation. Amen? It can totally shift your situation. If you, if you, hear, if you say, hear what God says, you repeat what he says and you take that to the next step and grow it, okay? Grow it, grow it continuously. But you need to, to start again and be aware of that seed faith that God gave you. And you need to be aware of that every day. And you need to say, how am I going to, to, to grow that today? So I also want to speak to you about how to lose, how to lose your faith. So, so maybe you still say, don't understand, where do I start? Where do I start? Where's the starting point? To make my faith effective, to loosen it, to get it loose, to, to see those things. I mean, it's good to talk about that, and it sounds fantastic. But how do I get there? Now, the Word of God 
says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, the following. By faith, we understand that the worlds, so everything that we see, were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God didn't take something and then made it. He started with nothing. He started with his word. His word out of his mouth. And that is why he is Yahweh, the creator. The one who made the things that have been made. Okay? And when he then created heaven and earth, it was put in motion by his spoken word. So he spoke about that. And in Genesis 1 verse, verse 3 to 6, we, we read that. It's not on the board, but, but that's where we read it, that he spoke. So God is a faithful God. He loosens his faith through the confession of his mouth. So what comes out of his mouth? And we need to follow his example of saying and confessing through our mouths. We sometimes think that confessing is only we have to confess our sins. No, no, no. We should confess the name of Jesus and what we believe in more. And sin will automatically disappear. Okay? Focus on the confession of faith and on, on of God's grace. Confess that and it will, it will drive out the other things. So, the first thing in confession is that there is power. There is power when you confess. When you speak, that what comes out of your mouth gives you power. It empowers life around you. Proverbs 18 verse 21, we all know that so well. That says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So what kind of fruit do you want to see hanging on your tree? Good fruit? Bad fruit? Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Be aware of what comes out of your mouth. Don't just react on your emotions. Oh, I'm angry, so now I'm, I, I, sh I shout. Or, you know, um, if, you, if your son does something that is out of line a lot and you tell, start telling him, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're worth nothing, you always do it wrong because you react on your emotions. Guess what you're going to see in a couple of years? You're going to see a boy that feels he's worthless. It feels he's doing things wrong. So find another way. Find something else to come out of your mouth that will build him, that will water that seed. Okay? Something like, I know you can do this right. Let's, let's try it again. You know, I know next time you will do it right. That has more power, but it's building up. If you tell him he's wrong, he will probably not do it again, but he will feel sad. If you tell him, next time you can do it right, I know it, then he feels empowered. Can you, can you understand the, the difference? So what comes out of your, out of your mouth, all the, all the breaks down or it builds. So we need to correct one another also in our daily speech. A man, husband and wife, friends, correct one another. Say, but what you just said is not building. It's breaking down. It is, God didn't say things out of his mouth that breaks down. He said things that builds. Second thing is that our words that comes out of our mouth either justifies or condemns. Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto un to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You will be saved. So if you are saved, you will have the Zozo life. The Zozo life says, have salvation, healing, provision, deliverance, regeneration, preservation, and prosperity. If you confess that. Now, confession also means, in the Greek form, it means homo logio. Homo logio. Now, those words, homo means the same. Logio meaning to say. So, we say the same things God said. Homo logio. 
So <clears throat> that is con confession. So we confess. And we also know that God said that Jesus is my son, okay, in whom I am very pleased. And that is why Jesus is the high priest of our confession. In um, the Hebrews 3 verse 1, it's the word says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. How beautiful is that? Partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. So everything we do and follow, we get out of, out of Jesus. That is why we have the doctrine of Christ. Because like Jesus did, so we do. Like he said, so we, we say. So he is the high priest of our confession. Okay. Mark 5, verse 25, verse 34, gives us a perfect conclusion on everything that, that, that was said today. And it is about the women that had a flow of blood for 12 years. Um, Mark 5, verse 25 to 34. Let's just read it. It says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. So she was still not healed. She tried a lot of, of earthly, worldly things, but she was still not healed. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Grew worse. And we also sometimes get to that point where, okay, Lord, now I surrender. And I want to say this morning, it's a good place to be, a surrendered place, where you say, Lord, I, I don't know how to treat my wife anymore or how to, what to do with my child anymore. I surrender. It's a good place. It's a, it's a good place because your faith led you to a point of total dependence. And that is why God gave us faith so that we can be dependent on him. The prodigal son, God was standing there. The father was standing there, and he was just waiting for the son to run to him. When he didn't know anymore, come back to the position of dependence. When she heard about Jesus, that's verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Okay? Now that's, that sounds like she just went up and touched the garment. But there's more to that. Behind the scenes, verse 28, for she said, so a couple of times before, she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Okay, so maybe she spoke to her friends about that. Maybe she spoke to the disciples about it and said, you know, this Jesus is amazing. I confess that if I only can do that, I will be healed. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. She felt it. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crown and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around and see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Because the truth will set you free. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. This woman was desperate in the first place. Are you desperate? Are you in a des desperate situation? of your faith, your current condition? Have you tried a lot of things that didn't work? But then she hears the report of Jesus and she heard about what he has done and that stirred the, the seed of faith in her heart and said, I need to get to this man. I need to get to Jesus. I need to have faith in him. And then she took desperate measures because uh, in that time, women wasn't allowed to be in, in that, those kind of circles. So, but she risked her life. 
to touch Jesus' garment. And then she received after her courage and after her faith. So she really received a miracle through faith. So she believed and she acted upon that belief. She confessed it. And what is important here, even before she had a miracle, she already confessed it. She says, she said, Jesus can save this. So also, for my personal situation, I declare that. And I said to, to Bets, I said to my family, I declare in Jesus' name that he knows what he's doing and he will bring us to that point where we need to be. So you skip by saying that confession and showing, confessing your truth. You skip all the hard feelings of the sad part, of the, of the thing that wants to come and steal from you because you immediately put your, your feelings and, uh, you know, on a different rock. You put it on faith. So you skip all the bad feelings, cheating all the bad feelings, all the desperate feelings, all the hopeless feelings. You cheat it because you shift that onto, onto God, onto dependence onto God. Yeah, she received a miracle immediately. Sometimes we receive it immediately. Other times we have to, we have to progressively Speak it and wait for it. But God, the same God that does it over time is able to do, to do it immediately. And that is why the first belief that you must have is always now, today, God, I believe you for it. I trust you for it. Yes, and we have to declare, like this woman did, we have to declare our miracle with our mouths even before it happens. Even before it happens, you have to declare it. So in summary of what the Lord wants to say to you today is that faith is a gift and it's a condition of in our hearts. It's what he placed there, the faith seed in our hearts. Faith operates in the present, not in the future. Faith is now, now faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1, now faith, okay? Living by faith applies that we act on conditions. And it applies to everything. It applies to everything in our lives. The wholeness of, of our lives, it applies to. It is released, faith is released through confession, okay? So the things that you trust for, start speaking about it. Start telling somebody, start telling your wife, start telling your husband, start telling somebody at work, this is what I trust God for. It's, it, it is dependent on your confession that comes out of your mouth. Every one of us have a measure of faith. You have it. Don't, don't doubt that you have faith, start using it. Don't doubt it. Start testing it. And then the picture today is that you can increase your faith. Okay? You can grow it. Yes, it starts small, but you must be willing to start small. You must be willing to be humble in the beginning. Start trusting God. Start speaking small things and see how God brings that into existence. And then your faith will grow and you, end, you will end up like somebody that you currently admire for their faith. Like for me personally, it's a person like Carrie Blake, which can just, there's no sickness that can stand in front of Jesus, but through Carrie Blake, through him. But he, his faith grew to such an extent that he's there. I want to challenge you this morning, and, I, and I've said that before, that it is like if you bought, bought yourself this brand new Mustang, five liter V8, and you read all the specs, and the specs said you can go from zero to 100 in 3.3 seconds, and your top speed is 180 miles per hour. That's 288 kilometers per hour. 
and you say, wow, this car is amazing. It's amazing. And I come to you and I say, yo, have, have, you, have you tried it? Uh, have, you, have you done Noto 100 in 3.3? What, what does it feel? What does it feel like? What, what does it stir up inside you? And you say, oh, I know it can do that, but I normally just do it in seven seconds. You know? That is not how our faith is supposed to be. Or top speed. I ask you, how does it feel when? How does it look to have the, the white stripes become one single lane at 288 kilometers? You say, no, I just take it to, to 120. It's good enough for me. But yeah, it can do that. It can do that. You see, it doesn't make sense because you don't get that feeling, you don't get that passionate feeling that this woman got that felt the sickness going out of her. The passionate feeling that you will get when you eventually see your business standing up, right? When you eventually see your child through grade 12, where you eventually see what you prayed for and trust the Lord through coming to fruition, that feeling, okay? You can, you, that you cannot compare to a, to a Mustang, especially because it's a Ford. <laughs> but you... You need to test your faith. That's the message this morning to you. There's this treasure called faith. There's this treasure that can take you from zero to 100 immediately. God can do your miracle immediately. There's this treasure that if you nurture it and you see it grow, it can, it can bring you to a whole new level in your life. And I mean all of your life. I mean all the factors that you can possibly think your life exists of. Every single thing, because God is concerned about everything. There's nothing excluded. Don't think he cannot touch your sickness. Don't think he cannot touch your finances. Because the limiting factor will be what you confess. If you say he cannot touch it, that's the fruit you will eat. That's the fruit you will have to be satisfied with. Then you will have to be satisfied with going at 120. Because you haven't grown your seed of faith. So God really wants to shake you this morning and he wants to say to you, I've given you a gift. Go and take it out of the cupboard and start using it. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. Go and take that gift and start using it little by little. If you don't like the, the world that you currently see around you, start changing it by what you say. Start speaking it. Start using the gift of faith every day. Speak it. See how it grows. And that is really what Hebrews 10 verse 38 and 39 is speaking about, that relationship. Because through faith, you recognize that there's a relationship between you and God that you cannot stand on your own. There's a relationship. You need him. It will give you access to divine things. Things that you know, won't find in the natural. You have to find it supernatural. You have to find it through faith. That's the divine things. That holy fervor, which is intense and passionate feeling. If you grow the seed of faith with God, you will have that intense and passionate feeling, passionate feeling. So faith in the beginning, we said it's a, it's a choice. You have to choose it, okay? But what you will sit with in the end is a feeling. That is when you get excited. That is what you, when you start praising God. That is when you can't stop praising God for what he has done in your life. So if you want that Zozo life, You have to accept the Chaya grace of God that's been given to you, but you have to activate it. Glory to God for that. Let's close our eyes. Lord God, we thank you this morning for this beautiful gift of faith that you've given us. Father, this morning you've just come and get us excited, Lord, about this gift. And it's not a gift like we sometimes get from people and we, we, 
We have another one and we don't even know where to put this one and we just put it in a cupboard. This gift is the gift of life, the completeness of life. We glorify you for this morning, Lord. And we thank you for coming to show us this morning how to use this gift to your glory because that is why you created us as men so that we can become your image. We can become like you, Father God. And what can be more exciting than that? To become like you. To become great and powerful, but not with our worldly desires, but with desires that comes from your kingdom, your purpose, Lord, your plans that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, for empowering us this morning through faith. Lord, this morning we don't, we don't want to walk out of here and just be in the same position again, just fall into the same hole again. And then next we come and try and find an answer again and come and sit at your feet again and just feel that we don't get what we're looking for. This morning, Lord, you really give us a, a key and you loosen our faith this morning, Father. You loosen it so that we can start using it, so that we can be like you. And through the power of speaking in faith, see the results. See the beautiful life forming around us that you had in mind for us, Lord. And your plans are good. You are a good father. You don't have bad plans for us. Father, you only have good plans. And all that you ask for us, of us, is to start using this gift of faith. So Lord, this morning we want to come and say to you, Father, thank you for this gift. Father, I commit, I commit this morning that I want to use it. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, this morning, to be with me every day. I, I'm going to be quiet every day for some time to think of this gift called, called faith. And through your Holy Spirit, you are going to remind us of this gift. So Lord, when we face a situation this week, whatever it may be, whether it wants to come and steal our joy and our happiness or even our breath, if it's sickness, We will not give the devourer pleasure in sliding down in, on all the emotions of anger and bitterness and resentment. But we will immediately put our feelings on the rock of faith, which is you, Jesus Christ. Surrender to you, dependent on you. Lord, and immediately we thank you that your salvation is immediate, it's imminent, it is here now. It's not for tomorrow, it is for today. We can take hold of it now, in this moment. And progressively, Lord, it's going to take us to a place where finally you will come and, 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 and get us, Lord. You'll come and fetch us and you'll take us to your heavenly kingdom where that is all we will see. But Lord, you give us a privilege this morning to already have heaven and your kingdom here on earth. Your kingdom life manifests today amongst us. Thank you, Father, for enabling us to use this beautiful gift of faith to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.